Ceylon, known in ancient times as Lanka the Resplendent. Today, an individual nation within the Commonwealth. Throughout the world, our country is known for its tea. We, the women of Ceylon, pick the young tender shoots, which are dried and marketed to the world. The greatest event in the history of our island was the coming of Buddhism, to which our temples are dedicated. With Buddhism, there came to Ceylon a gracious and gentle culture. A grace such as that displayed by the dancers who in formal procession came out to greet their queen. With our music and our dancing, which go back 2,000 years before the Christian era, we salute our sovereign and say, welcome the queen. of Kandy, the elephants of Ceylon must in a royal parahara to take their ceremonial part in our welcome to Her Majesty. At Victoria Park, near Aurelia, Candy chiefs awaited the Queen. And on this occasion it was said of her that she no longer symbolized the dominance of one nation over another, but rather the ideal of unity creating strength. At Victoria Park, the Queen and her husband, Prince Philip, are to leave us a souvenir of their visit. Taking earth from a silver bowl, Her Majesty here plants a tree by which we shall remember her coming. A simple ceremony, but one we shall always carry in our thoughts. As the Queen's visit draws to a close, we think of the words she used when she broadcast her personal greetings to us from Colombo. I hope, she said, that my presence here will give you a new sense of unity and nationhood and will help you to feel your membership of that wider family of nations. Thus, the Queen's visit to Ceylon drew to a close with the applause of the youth of an ancient people and the traditional salutation of the candy elephants. The elephants you see now belong to Africa, to a vast continent where wildlife and big game is still teeming. Life that is still ferocious and untamed, but life that moves also with infinite grace. Once more in Africa we cry, welcome the queen. Once more, because it was here that she became queen and Africans were the first of her subjects to greet her as such. Now in Uganda, we greet her again. We are not just one but many people, people of many races and languages, who mingle together here today to see our sovereign. Now 
now our drums beat and our warriors begin what we call here a koli dancing. <laughs> wild, magnificent dancing of Central Africa, the last interlude before the royal flight to the Western Desert. the desert. We all knew it as that, we who fought there, where our armies of young men from Britain and the Commonwealth triumphed in the end. The relics of that army that still lie there in the desert sand. The men who lie there still in the desert sand. Men of all creeds and races, some named, some nameless. Here, to the cemetery at Tobruk, came the Queen alone with her husband. Here they paused, and in a solemn moment paid tribute to those who lie in African soil. Afterwards, the family reunion aboard Britannia, a reunion fittingly kept as a private event. As with her escort of aircraft to the RAF, Britannia sailed away. We all knew the happiness that went with her. The long months of family separation were over. Ahead lay Europe once more, and the splendid welcome of the Mediterranean fleet. Fifteen proud ships, led by Admiral Lord Mountbatten and his flagship, came out to meet Her Majesty and her family. What a gallant sight this was, as the lines of the destroyers wheeled inward toward the Britannia. As they bore down in line at 25 knots, there followed a salute of 21 guns. It was the Royal Navy now who said, Welcome the Queen. Within half a cable length now of the Royal Yacht, they swept by cheering. And we had our first glimpse of the little prince and princess at this exciting moment. Admiral Lord Mountbatten then joined Britannia as she sailed on toward Malta. And from the carrier Eagle, helicopters rose to join the air escort. Malta's Grand Harbour now, gay with its painted dices. They were in Europe, and the flags of Malta and the European nations greeted them. Once again, a solemn moment, recalling the airmen who fought and died in the Second World War. Airmen from all parts of the Commonwealth and from allied nations. For this unveiling came pilgrims from Britain and from all over the world. Across Grand Harbour to join the Maltese people in greeting their parents, so well loved on the island, came Prince Charles and Princess Anne. There was a certain formality about the disembarkation of the heir to the throne and his small sister, but there was also a childish wonder and gusto about the pair of them, which immediately, and for the rest of the tour, won the hearts of all who saw them.
children drove through the crowds to the Phoenicia Hotel, where a balcony had been reserved for them. to look out over Floriana and watch the great parade where their mother, the Queen, was taking the salute. The Rock of Gibraltar, British since 1704, only two and a quarter square miles in extent, a fortress, harbour and air base with a population of more than 20,000 people. Thousands of ships call here every year, but surely none has ever been acclaimed with such enthusiasm as the royal yacht, with the Queen, her sailor husband and her children on the bridge, and her crew lined up below. Prince Charles and Princess Anne were there to watch every move. To these two young spectators, at least, everything was just fun. And to their sailor escorts, both themselves family men, it was an enviable duty indeed. The keys of the fortress offered by the governor and with a formal touch accepted by the queen. This was fun to watch too. A ceremony, a tradition, and perhaps somebody will tell the young prince that his great-great-grandfather, Edward VII, was the first reigning monarch to be offered the Gibraltar keys on land. Thus began the last visit of the tour. Gibraltarians, all in their best. And it was one of their own representatives who, speaking for them all, said to the queen, we are proud that our beloved rock should be the final stepping stone in this triumphant journey. And now there was a great treat in store for the younger visitors. The famous apes who inhabit the barren heights of the rock. There, high above the great fortress and harbour, her Royal Highness the Princess and her brother, the heir to the throne, became just children at play. Children at play, and the famed apes of Gibraltar on their best behavior, or nearly on their best. Royal bounty. Everyone seemed to have brought a supply of nuts, and there's no telling what a monkey won't do for a nut. When the Queen and Prince Philip arrived to join their children, the apes were just as welcoming, just as friendly, just as greedy, and being apes, no respecters of persons. And so this visit to the loyal and excited people of Gibraltar drew to its close. Down through the narrow, winding streets, so familiar to generations of British serving men, went a royal family party. Back to the harbour and Britannia carrying them away on the last stage of their historic journey. 